not what you can do for the client. And the prospect that hears that, they're just thinking, this is just another agent trying to do a deal, you know, not really looking out for me, okay? I want to reverse this. That's why I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm spreading a message that it's relationships over transactions. Okay, and, and I want to teach agents how to figure out what the agent can do for the client. Okay, in terms of what in the world can I do for you today? Right, that's the magic question. When you figure out what exactly you can do to help this person, whether regardless if it's to buy or sell a property today, then the answer to that question, it, it, that's what the entire, that entire situation needs to be focused on. What you can do to help them, what they're trying to do. Not if they want to buy or sell. And too many agents, a lot of agents, when they're prospecting, they're going through all their stuff, and they're, they're, they're looking for deals. Most of them go through their list, and if, a, if they run into a prospect, and that prospect doesn't want to buy or sell today, then they kind of just throw them away. Throw them to the side, and they just keep going. They're looking for somebody that wants to do a deal today. And I believe that less than 1% of prospects that you talk to the first time are ready to do a deal today. And that's what these most agents are looking for that less than 1% of prospects that will do a deal today. Where, where I win, where I feel is a much more interesting place to be, is the 20 to 30% of people that you talk to that like you enough to do a deal, they're just not ready yet. You're, you're on the phone with them, or you're talking to them in person. Too many agents are just throwing it away if they're not ready. Where I feel like each and every prospect that you create a relationship with, lifelong relationship, is actually worth 10 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career. Through repeat business, referrals, referrals over referrals. Some of my best clients have never bought or sold anything. I created a relationship and they referred me so many people. They know that I, I wasn't there to do a deal. I was there to help them and see what I could do for them. Not do they want to do a deal and if not, okay, see you later. So I like to live off the 20 to 30 percent of people who like me enough to do a deal just not ready while I'm also living off the less than 1 percent just like everybody else. So I'm building my business for now and the future at the same time. And if you think about it like this, think about where your business could be if you captured all the people that you actually took the time to see if there was a connection instead of just trying to figure out if they want to buy or sell something today. And so that's kind of how I think about that. So once you realize all this and that business is, is totally unlimited, you cannot do all the deals that are available to each and every one of you. Now our success is predicated on just three things. The first thing is what I want to know. If I'm going to judge your business, I want to know these three things. And, and once I know these three things, I can tell you exactly where you're going. I can tell you exactly what your business is going to look like in the future. The first thing is... How many new prospects are you talking to on a daily basis? That tells me where your work ethic is and where your determination and where you, do you really want this? And a lot of agents, they won't call or talk to new prospects. Or if they do, they don't do it consistently. So those agents lose right there. The second thing, is out of the prospects that you talked to, how many did you actually connect with long term, short long term? That tells me where your communication skills are. Did you create a friendship? Did you make them feel comfortable? I think a big part of, of real estate is making our clients and our prospects just feel comfortable. If they don't feel comfortable with you, they're never going to do business with you. 
They have to feel like you have their best interest and feel comfortable with you. The third thing is, what's your system? What, what do you have in place to stay in touch with the people you connected with for the rest of their life? Okay, that's how we maintain our relevance with the people we connected with forever. So a lot of agents, they contact, they connect, but then they don't have anything in place to stay in touch and stay relevant. If you don't have a system somehow, some way, to stay relevant with the people you actually connected with, then how are they going to know to call you when they decide it's time to buy or sell? And by the way, it's, it's their decision when they're going to buy or sell. It's not our decision. It's not our job to talk our clients into buying or selling. We're not going to say any magical thing to make people buy and sell. They're going to make that decision. Our job is to contact them, connect with them, and then have a system in place to stay in touch forever until they get ready to make that decision. And if you notice, I didn't talk about how many listings you have, or how many closings you have, or how many, I certainly didn't say anything about any appointments. I think this is another thing going on with the industry where most everybody is judging their business based on how many appointments they're setting. And I think appointments are good. You go, you talk, but I wanna know what happens at the appointment, did you connect? What your system look like to stay in touch forever? Those are the things I want to know. I don't really care how many appointments you set. I really don't care how many listings you have. I can see on a daily basis how many are you contacting, out of those how many you're connecting with, and do you have a system in place? So I'm looking at work ethic, communication skills, and how are you maintain relevance. And relevant, it, it, it's a it's a three part package without. All, so, if this is what predicates success, it doesn't matter what the market does. It doesn't matter if robots are going to replace us. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, the interest rates, prices. It doesn't matter. If you control these three things, then you will be successful forever. Does this make sense, guys? Yeah. Am I helping some of you? Here's another question for you guys. Um, maybe the naysayers who don't believe that it's unlimited. Have you ever woke up one morning and you get ready for work? You go to the office, you turn on the computer, you get on MLS, and you pull up the hot sheet for the closed sales to find that there are zero closed sales that day. Has anyone had a day where there were not a single closed sale in their MLS or their market? No. Because closings happen every single day. Closings happen every single day. All of this stuff is really basic and really simple if you think about it. You know, and it, and it doesn't matter again what the market's doing. Up, down, sideways, left, right, interest rates, prices, transactions, supply, demand, who cares? I went through the crash. And I lost everything in the crash. And what I learned, looking back, and as I was uh, watching all this happen, closings were still happening every single day. There were less closings, right? But there were a lot less agents. If you look at my market, transactions went down 50% in my county. Right? It was like 20,000 in the county, it was 10,000. That was the worst year. But we went from 3,000 agents to 700 agents. So we lost, say, 70% of our agents. So transactions goes down 50%, but but number of agents went down 70%. What does that tell me? More transactions per agent in the worst year of the crash. If you have the right mindset and you really go all in with what I'm telling you, then you're invincible. You can't lose. 
and it's all predicated on the three things and how much you want to put into it. So that's kind of the mindset of how I think about it. I mean, I got a lot more, but I don't have a lot of time. I want to get into just a little bit of the, the actions that you should be taking to, to find all these deals. Right? So closings are happening every day. There's an unlimited amount of loyal clients for each and every one of you. Okay? Business is unlimited. Okay? You said that 15 times. So what else do we need to take advantage of all this business that's out there? We need an unlimited supply of leads, of prospects. In order to have unlimited business, you got to have unlimited leads, unlimited clients to work with and filter through. There's, you know, there's people out there that'll tell you that leads are limited. You got to buy your little piece of that pie or you won't have any. Leads are unlimited. Two words, property owners. You can never, ever, 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 ever sell all, to talk to every single property owner in, in your market, ever in your life. Does anyone here think that they can call every single property owner in your area, in your lifetime, and talk to every single property owner? So you guys are proving my point here. It's completely unlimited. You could sit, which is what I did for 15 years. I sat in an office, door closed, by myself, just calling until my ears bled. Property owners, day and night, to build my business. So, th here's my strategy, okay? The three things, contact, connect, relevance. I'm gonna give you guys my quick little strategy everything that I do, real quick, just a real quick, short synopsis of it. And you guys can use bits and pieces of it. You can use all of it. You can say, that sucks. I don't want to do any of it. But I'm going to give it to you, okay? And hopefully you can take something out of it and use it in your business. But my strategy is to call property owners. Okay, it's unlimited, can't call them all. Okay. Property owners, by the way, are the highest quality prospects. They buy and sell. They're the best buyers. They already know all the, you don't have to educate them. They already know everything about home ownership. You don't have to educate them at all. They know it, they already know that. So you take the education time out of that equation. To me, the highest quality prospect is the prospect that makes me the most amount of money in the least amount of time. I'm a single agent. As a single agent, I have to be most effective. I have to pick and choose the actions that, that are more, more efficient than, than anything else. And I'm really good at figuring out what's most efficient. And what I'm telling you is the most efficient way to build a really huge business. Not everybody wants a really, really huge business. I don't know what everybody wants individually, but I can tell you what I did. I've called condo owners for years and years and years, okay? I'm calling them in a low pressure manner. I'm not asking them if they want to buy or sell, okay? If they do want to buy or sell, great. That's that less than 1% I'm gonna live off of right now, right? But I'm looking for the 20 to 30% of people who like me and we connect long term, okay? I'm gonna have this conversation. I'll tell you my entire script in just a second. I'm gonna get their email. So I'm going to call, I'm going to contact, I'm going to connect. If we connect, I'm going to get their email. And then they're going to get a weekly email every single week on the same day of the week forever. It's been going out since 2007. 11 years, this email's went out every single Wednesday through all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Never missed a week. And the email shows my clientele hardworking, dependable, you know, professional, knowledgeable. It does all that for me on a huge scale while I cont continue trying to connect with more people to get them into my relevance system, right? So that's what I do. Um, she said I just got 10 minutes, so 
real quick. I want to answer a couple questions, but I'm going to tell you, just kind of give you a brief story of how I got where I'm at. I grew up roofing houses with my father. I got in real estate when I was 20. It was 2002. The market blew up. Um, I became a millionaire by 23. The market crashed. I was bankrupt by 25, sleeping on friends' couches, and even slept in my car a couple nights. Went back to roofing houses. I worked on an oil rig for a year. It was during that time, that, that down moment in my career, which I wasn't down. I was actually happy. I, everything had just worked for me. So whether I have money or don't or whatever I'm doing, it's all the same to me. But during that time, I was so curious. I wanted to know why I failed. So this was the moment that I had the most personal growth in my life. I read over 100 books. I studied the market. I watched the top producers, low producers. And what I realized was exactly what I'm telling you, you guys. Business is unlimited, closings happen every day, and where I really went wrong is in the first half of my career, it was all about the deal. All I wanted to do was a deal, a deal, a deal. I didn't care about the people, I just wanted the deal. And, and something made me realize it and I flipped it from transactions to relationships. And I realized that every prospect that I create a relationship with has worked 10 to 20 deals to me over the life of my career. So the more relationships I can create, the, the, the bigger my business is. You know, I'm stacking up 10 to 20 deals every, every person I connect with. That's the way I look at it. So from there, I got back in real estate. I started my climb up. We had the oil spill. I made more money that year than I did the year before. I went to Remax. I kept climbing and I combined this relationships over transactions with the, one of the most powerful names in real estate. From there, 2014, I sold 100 properties, number one in the state for Remax. 15, I sold 100. 16, I sold 100. Last year, I did 129 deals, 42 million. Single agent. Also, wrote two books for real estate agents and started coaching for free. And the reason I'm doing it for free is because I actually want to make a difference. And on my tombstone, it's going to say, he reduced the failure rate in the real estate industry. Okay? So, I want to take a couple questions. Thank you guys for listening. Yeah. Does anyone have a question? I think just provide value. If you say you have a group and that's where you, all your clients are or whatever, just provide value in the group. Like show them things that are for sale, show them events in the area, show them you know, a list of closed sales, a price per square foot compared to last year, all the stuff people really want to know. Like the stuff they really want to know, not how to cook shrimp, shrimp that too fake or what color to paint your walls because it's small. Like real market information that they want to know. And just provide the value and just be there. You know, does that answer your question? No. Do you allow other uh, agents to be on your email list, your weekly email list, or is that just for months? No, you can go to my real estate website, um, rickycrewrealestate.com. You should be able to sign up for that the email. What have you found to be the most effective way to connect with people? You talked about that being a key strategy. I think don't ask them if they want to buy or sell. You know, here, here's the script real quick, because i got five minutes. Here's the script. Ring, 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 hello. Hey, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, this is Ricky Carruth at Remakes Large Beach. How you doing? Good. Me too. I'm just enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Cool. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but the house right down the road from you just sold, and I didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. No? Cool. Was there an agent in the area that you would work with if you were to do something? No? Cool. Well, look, I'm sure at some point in the future you're going to want to buy or sell something. I would love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would we already have to stay in touch with you? Great. What's your email? See how it flows? See how it does it? It's low pressure. See, people are scared to make calls. They're scared because they've been taught to do it wrong. And they've been taught to just 
call and say, hey, you thought about selling your house? Yeah, that's uncomfortable for everybody. But when you have a script that gives two questions that's designed to throw them off, loosen them up, and read how they're doing today, and then flow into market information and, how you, and what can I do for you, now you really got something. You got a real conversation going on, and they feel like you're like a friend or a family more than a real estate agent. Right? Does that answer your question? Is that what you're asking? And then from there, the weekly email does all the heavy lifting of building that relationship deeper and deeper because they start to realize this guy's real. He's going to do it every single time on the, when he said he was going to do it. So he asked if they have a name in the area that he was going to say, yes, I do, my nephew's name. Yeah. That. that is a great thing to happen because now you don't have to waste your time on that person anymore. See, here's the problem. Most people have this great conversation with a prospect, and they think, I have this new client, we're going to do all these deals together, but they don't realize their mom's an agent, or their cousin, or the best friend from high school, and no matter how much they like you, they'll never use you. So I think that is a very crucial question that you have to ask pretty much up front. If you say, hey, what in the world can I do for you? And they say, oh, we're thinking about buying or selling, the, you immediately say, great, is there an agent you're working with on that? That way there's no mis miscommunication, there's no anybody getting let on. We know up front where we stand, and then we can decide if we want to just let it go, or do we want to stay in the game with it, or how we want to handle it. But if they do say that, I say, great, well, who are they? Maybe I know them. And I try to get them to tell me their name, because it's real funny when they can't remember their agent's name. And that's fine. If they don't want to be bothered, then I, I don't want to bother them. I want what they want, not what I want, because it's unlimited. Just keep on calling. Hey, Ricky, do you go to closings A and B? Um, do you do social media posts of your closings and clients? Or I go to all my closings if my, if my client is at the closing. I sell a lot of resort properties, so a lot of times it's by mail, so they're not there. But if they are, I go to every one of them. And no, I don't do the just sold the pictures. Yeah, I don't, I don't do those. Um, but uh, but um, not bad, not a bad idea. How much time do I have? Okay, thanks. So you get, I was taking notes pretty studious here. You made a couple of comments. You said something about the lessons from 2008 crash, and then there was two things you were going to give us. And you said leads are unlimited, and then under that, I put property owners. Yeah. And then there was like a tab B, and I was waiting for it. I think we kind of went to the next time they asked a question, or we went to another topic. And I don't know if you recall. I'm kind of putting it on the spot, I apologize. I'm not trying to do that. Business is over. No, that wasn't two things. You know, okay. The, the, the first thing was that you got to quit going after the deal. Is that what you're saying? Uh, there were two things you got to know if you're going to do more deals. Quit going after the deal, concentrate on the person and what they need, and then realize that it's unlimited. So now you allocate your time differently because you know that you don't have to go all it, it's correct. I've never understood people that have five pending deals and four listings and they can't do anything else. That's all they do. They spend 50 hours a week on pending deals. I've never understood that because I spend about 15 minutes on my 32 deals I have pending right now. I spend about 30 minutes a week on just figuring out if I need to do something. So are you using uh, an aid or transaction I have, I have an assistant that, that helps me, you know, but she at the same time is working on I'm trying to figure out how to do more deals. If you do a deal, you get a listing, if, if you have a pending deal, that deal's done. It's kind of out of your hands. It's, they either want to buy, they want to sell, and it's going to happen, or they're going to get cold feet back out, or finance is going to fall through, or whatever. When you realize it's unlimited, you don't worry so much about all these little things. How am I single agent and I can have 32 pending deals and over 50 listings? Because I don't worry about any of that. I'm thinking about where the next, my next name is. Who else can I help? I've already helped these people. Relevance. What system do you have in place? It could be anything. And guys, too, one last thing. Um, I, I talked about the cold calling property owners. This applies to everything. You can, it could be buyer leads. You have a long list of buyer leads in your call on. It's still, what can I do for you? It doesn't have to be cold calling. I mean, if it's internet and you're messaging back and forth, you still need to have a mindset of what can I do for this person? It applies to any realm of real estate, not just what I do.
Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.